I feel like my makeup and my hair is not really working today, but we're, you know, we're just gonna go through this. We're gonna film this intro and you're gonna find out what I'm gonna be reading for the next, I don't know, week or something. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Moody Readings where I talk about books and things. And today I have a reading vlog thing for you where I asked on Twitter and also kind of just in general for people to recommend their sci-fi favorites or thing or books that they think that I should read as a sci-fi aficionado and I got three really good recommendations. I actually got a lot more than that but one of them is like the two of them are really big tomes so I really wasn't sure that I was gonna be able to do more than three books for this video so the first one that I have is Hyperion by Dan Simmons Di <laughs> Simmons, not Simmons by Dan Simmons and that was recommended to me by Raj over at Rajathon or Ramsey over at Rajathon and um, that's actually the book that I'm gonna start with and then after that I want to get through the big tomes first and then I want to go to the like easier one like the shorter one I guess but the next one that I got recommended was by Angela over at Literary Science Alliance and that is A Memory Called Empire by Arcadi Martine. Now this book, I have both of these, I have no idea what they're about and I'm kind of scared because I feel like Hyperion is that classic sort of sci-fi that I'm not sure that I'm gonna like, you know, it's like that sci-fi that... I don't know it scares me it scares me okay but also Dune scared me and it turned out to be one of my favorites so I'm hoping the same thing happens with Hyperion and then a memory called Empire I think it has a lot to do with space politics which is not my cup of tea but I really want to read it and not only did Angela recommend this but also I know that Sarah over at Voyages Through Tomes really likes it and she just read the sequel so we'll see what happens with that one and the last recommendation comes from my friend Jessie over at the Bookish Moms and that is We Are Satellites or We Were Satellites? I think it's We Are Satellites by Sarah Pinkster. Um, I do have an idea what this book is about. This book is about um, like implants that people put in their heads that makes them like be able to do things better, be able to pr not procrastinate, <laughs> the contrary of procrastinate, be able to do like multiple activities at the same time and it helps people get ahead. But you know, I think there is a something to be said there about like, does this take away part of your humanity? Is this unfair advantage compared to people that can't get the implants? And I think it's more of a family drama and a soft sci-fi compared to these other two, which are really big sci-fi staples. So that's it. Those are the books that I'm gonna be reading for however long it takes me. I'm really scared of Hyperion, but we'll see how this goes. Hey there. So last night I picked up Hyperion on Audible. Well, not I didn't pick it up. It's been there for a while, but I decided to start reading it because I couldn't sleep. It was like midnight and Rodrigo was off into dreamland sleeping and I was just laying there just unable to sleep. That's probably because I took a three hour nap and I woke up at 9 p.m. So I was trying to fall asleep and I ended up reading 20% of this book. So. I will be honest, I have no idea what's going on, <laughs> but that also happened to me with Dune, you know, I had no idea what was going on with Dune and I ended up really loving it. And the story that I read, so this is kind of like the Canterbury Tales in space. If you've read the Canterbury Tales or if you've known about them, they're basically a story of like people traveling together and telling a story and they're telling the story of their past. Now, from what I gather, <laughs> and from what I read in the Wikipedia article, because I was really lost, there are these people that are tra that are traveling to some time tombs, which are basically going back in time. There's also this whole issue with um, AI and outlanders, which are humans that are augmented, and they're the ones that can travel between stars and stuff like that. But I just really didn't understand much of that, so I'm just gonna leave it out of, the <laughs> of this whole review, at least for now. Maybe I'll understand more of it later. But, um, yeah, so I got through the first story, which is the story of a Catholic priest who's going, I, and, and the reason they're going here, I, I don't understand really why they're going here. 
I think this is something that I need to look up like or they said it at some point but again this is the thing with with um like from the 70s to the 90s sci-fi is really confusing to me but I don't understand why they're going there I do know that they're going there and that there might be a spy in the group and they're telling their tales and the first tale of this Catholic priest and his tale is more about another Catholic priest and it was so good I was invested I was like I, I need to know what happens I need to know what happens so so far I'm really liking the book itself I, I'm really liking how it reads it reads it's like an easy read it's not one of those reads where you're like huh what are they saying no you totally understand what's going on the thing at least you know as far as the prose goes but I'm I'm just a little bit confused about what the point of all this is <laughs> I know that there is this like the the tombs are said to be controlled by this creature called the shriek Sh shrike I don't I don't know how to pronounce it but he, it it's said to be controlled by this creature and um, it's, it's just really interesting for now like it's super interesting and I want more that I think that that's the key I want to know more I'm sorry about this lightning like every time I go down my hands are like touched by light you know but um, yeah that's all I have to say about Hyperion for now I'm gonna lay down because I have a bit of a migraine and I'm supposed to go out with my husband today for lunch and I don't want to have a migraine for lunch so I'm gonna continue on with Hyperion. Can you see it? Can you see it? There you go, Hyperion. And I will let you know what I think when I have read any more of it. So I just finished part two, which is the part of the soldier that was amazing. This book is amazing. Like every time I read a chapter, I still don't know what the fuck is going on, but I want to know more. That's See, that's the thing with this kind of sci-fi literature. But I decided to read to you the book description on Goodreads, just in case, because I'm not giving you a really good description of it, but I'll... And also, I just, I'm not good at, like, hanging on to these descriptions myself. Like, <laughs> I kind of just forget them. I get lost in the moment of the story. So here's, here's the book description. On the world called Hyperion, beyond the law of the Hema... Hegemon hegemony of man which is basically like the I, I love to always say the UN of mankind so like the um, the coming together of planets there waits the creature called the Shrike there are those who worship it there are those who fear it and there are those who have vowed to destroy it in the valley of the time tombs where huge brooding structures move backward through time the shrike waits for them all on the eve of armageddon with the entire galaxy at war seven pilgrims set forth on a voyage on a final voyage to hyperion seeking the answers to on to the unsolved riddles of their lives each carries a desperate hope a sad terrible secret and one may hold the fate of humanity in his hands so here's the thing so these i don't know why these pilgrims were chosen but as you hear the stories you know that at least for now most not most of them all of them have had contact with the shrike shrike in one way or another there's also the outcast which are basically humans that are that have merged with androids and they're also androids so there is a lot going on in this galaxy there's a lot of backstory but let me tell you that like that doesn't even matter as to how good this book is written and how much you are invested in each character and we just got like a big bombshell dropped on us you know about the time tombs and somebody has seen the time tombs and um they have seen the bodies of the pilgrims but they won't tell us who they saw and uh, it's really interesting and I just now I just want to continue reading but I gotta get ready for lunch I am just I am loving this book I, <laughs> see this always happens to me in the beginning with science fiction books I'm always like I'm not sure about this I'm not sure and then I'm like this is bomb this is great the only thing that I will say if you're not a fan of flashbacks this might not be the book for you because this is basically told through flashbacks we're supposed to figure out these people's 
lives and why they're here and there is a baby among them like I don't get the whole baby thing yet and it reminds me of another book where like they sacrifice a baby I wonder if the baby's gonna be sacrificed or if they're gonna be there till the end but I'm I'm with it I'm loving it so far everything is up my alley and I'm really liking it I love the stories I think it has a little bit of everything for everyone like if you like that sort of religious sci-fi there's that part for you you like military sci-fi and I'm sure we're gonna get through other types of sci-fi stories told in just this one book I think that's what makes this book brilliant I think I haven't I've only been through two chapters and there's six chapters so I'm really excited. I want to know what happens. I'm so like gripped by this book that I, I didn't expect it. I was honestly dreading filming this video because I didn't want to read Hyperion. And I kind of feel the same way about uh, A Memory Called Empire. And I wonder if it's going to be the same thing where I'm like, oh, I'm not sure I want to read it. And then I'm like, I love this. I love this. So that's my update. And now I'm going to go get ready for lunch because we're, li we're leaving in like half an hour and I'm not gonna wear a hoodie because it's like 75 outside Fahrenheit or like 25 27 but in my house it's nice and this hoodie is cozy and I think it looks really good so <laughs> that's that's all I had to say I really have to focus on looking at the viewfinder and not looking at I'm not, not I have to focus on not looking at the viewfinder that's something that I'm trying to work on it's a lot easier said than done if you've never done YouTube and if you don't have a flip screen to not look at yourself to make sure I don't know I, I like I'm always making sure like the background is okay or that you can actually see me or something and it's very strange to like stare at this camera you know what it reminds me of it reminds me of Al from um, 2001 Space Odyssey like I feel it's gonna go like this and talk to me at any point <laughs> I'm a mess I've literally done nothing today than lay in bed and read Hyperion I am on chapter what is it on chapter five of six I could literally finish this today and that would be crazy because I didn't think that I would finish a 500-ish page book in one day but that's the beauty of audiobooks for me that's why I do audiobooks it's because I read them a lot faster when I'm listening to them because I'm an auditive learner but that's beyond the point this book is so gripping like I want to know what the mystery is I want to know what's going on also no I'm not gonna apologize for my pimple nor the lovely um it's not a, it's not acne but it's like a rash that I have from wearing my mask because I still wear my mask. Yeah, I've just been reading and I'm I'm thrilled. Honestly, I'm thrilled. I'm I'm usually not a fan of like big books because I feel like you could tell the story in a shorter way, but I just don't know what I would take away from this. Everything is there and I and I know why it's there and it makes sense for it to be there. So, I like it. Also, I went out for lunch with my husband and I got the worst indigestion ever. I'm about to like, we already went to the pharmacy once to get some prescriptions after lunch and I'm about to beg him to let, like go to the pharmacy again and get some like, what is that called? Indigestion medicine, I don't know because I have really bad indigestion. But there's a good chance that I'll finish this today I'm not sure if I'm going to update you today about it, but there's a good chance that I'll finish it today or tomorrow, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow. I have, I have to film something else for tomorrow because like I want a video to go up this week and I'm not sure that I'm going to be done with all these books this week. So I'm going to film tomorrow and then I'll finish this and I'll get to the other book. But for now it's smooth sailing except on Hyperion on Hyperion it's not smooth sailing it's like the contrary of smooth sailing um yeah I'm um, thank you Ramsey for recommending this book now let's see the ending because you know for me the ending is paramount so we'll see how it ends I did it I finished Hyperion in one day and I must say this is not my new favorite um sci-fi classic but it's definitely a really good read i wouldn't recommend it if you're new to sci-fi but 
the, it, I mean, I finished it in one day. It was obviously gripping and it was obviously really good. I think the, the, the way the story was told was really interesting. Um, I have to admit that I was kind of lost with all the political stuff, which is why I'm so scared of a memory called Empire because the political stuff just loses me. I, did, I don't get it. I'm, I'm kind of dumb for that stuff, like even in real life. <laughs> so yeah, I'm done with the first book, Hyperion by Dan Simmons. And I, can't, I still can't believe that I just spent all day in bed just reading a book. That's... That hasn't happened in a while, which is a testament to how good the book is. I just, like, if I was to compare it to Dune, how I felt when I finished Dune, I was giddy and excited and, ah, this is not that feeling, you know? I'm happy that I finished it and I'm happy that I read it. I just don't think this is going to be a new classic favorite. Like, I'm not going to recommend it a lot. For people to read especially because i like to recommend things on my channel that i think would be good for people that are starting out with sci-fi and i just don't think this is it because there's a lot of factions well i do but, but i don't recommend doing that often either do i no i i usually don't recommend these more classic sci-fi books but if you are already a sci-fi reader and you want to like dab your feet into late 80s early 90s sci-fi and a really good sci-fi too like it, it, it was really good like I'm, i don't know if i'm making it sound like it wasn't good because it really was good it was just what it, oh that's my purse i was like what is behind me um it just i mean i, I gave it a five stars I gave it a five stars, but it's not a book that I'm gonna recommend often on my channel for people because I feel that if I do, people are gonna be like, what the fuck did I just read? <laughs> you know, or at least it, that's the way it was for me. Like, I loved it, clearly I loved it, but it's not gonna become like something like I'm not gonna base, well, I don't know, maybe I'll recommend it for like hard sci-fi and like for classic sci-fi but I didn't like it as much as I like to. Hi everyone! Here goes my cat. <laughs> um, so today is Sunday and today I'm gonna start a memory called Empire by Arcadi, Arca, Arcadi Martin. There we go, Arcadi Martin. And I thought I would just sit here and do my makeup with you as I share some of my thoughts. I finished, as you saw last night, I finished um, Hyperion by Dan Simmons and I really liked it um, it's not my favorite sci-fi like it's not my favorite classic sci-fi but it's definitely really good and I, I really like the Canterbury Tale aspects of it I hope I'm doing this right because this is the first time that I'm like doing my makeup on camera I have a mirror next to me but the setup was just really crazy A Memory Called Empire what do what are my initial thoughts going into this novel? I'm 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 a bit skeptical because a lot of my fantasy friends <laughs> like this novel, which usually means I'm not gonna like this novel. And I don't know, I don't know. I I kind of feel like it'll be more fantasy. Although more, a lot of people tell me that definitely it's not on the fantasy side. It's more on the sci-fi side. I just guess that I associate political stuff. <laughs> like, more political... Like, when the plot is more political, I associate it with fantasy. I'm sorry, I forget to talk. How do beauty gurus do this? I forget to talk while I'm, like, blending in. By the way, in case anyone's wondering, I use the IT Cosmetics CC color correcting full coverage cream and hydrating and anti-aging concealer cc plus cream 50 spf whatever i i still use spf anyway but as you can see it does offer pretty good coverage and i thought since i'm probably gonna be filming today and we're probably gonna go out today i just do a little bit of makeup nothing nothing much there you go just the light dusting of that and some blush and I'm probably gonna do something with my brows. I know my brows have been a little bit out there. I don't know what to do with them. I lost my 
eyebrow brush. I just ordered a new one. So yeah. So going back to the books. So the one that I'm most exciting to, excited to read, I'll be honest, is the one that I left for last, which is We Are Satellites by Sarah Pinkster. I'm really excited to read that book. Where did my brush go? I think it's more my style. Watch like it be a total surprise and not and I'm not gonna like it or something. That's it. I'm gonna keep my hair up or do I put it down? It's probably gonna go down because I can't stand ponytails when my hair is this short. Here we go. I don't know if you can see that. A memory called Empire on script. It's ready to go. And I'm gonna get reading. I am about 25% into a memory called Empire. I have no idea what's going on. Also, I was reading it and I was, I, I have to admit, it's kind of my fault because I was reading it and I was a little bit like not really focusing. And I don't know, the story is a little strange. Like the beginning I really liked, but then it gets strange. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it without spoiling it, but I don't really, I'm not really enjoying the story that much. So I guess that's my update for the 25% mark. Let's see if it gets any better. Hello, it's the next day. Sorry I didn't vlog a lot like yesterday. It's just that I really didn't have much to update. No, actually I did have a lot to update you on. I got to about 55% of a memory called Empire and I am so into it now. The only thing that bothers me is the names. Like, I have no idea who anyone is and also I'm really bad at political intrigue. I'm just not that smart. But I want to know what's going on. There's been assassinations, assassination attempts, and, and war, and it just has been a lot, lot of fun. And I really enjoy reading it. I really like the character Three Seagrass. I think she is so cool. And I also really like the character, um, oh, what's his face? Yiskar? Yiskar? I think that's how you pronounce that. So I've been liking it and I was listening to this book at my normal 2.53 speed and I realized that I couldn't do that. I had to lower it down to 2 speed because I was missing out on so many small details because I'm sorry, I'm like stuffy from sleeping. As you can tell from my genetically hereditary black circles but anyway. So yeah, I'm actually turning a corner with this book. I might finish it today, but because it's this book that I'm like slowly listening to, I'm not sure if I am going to finish it today or tomorrow, but that's okay. Sometimes you finish book fast, sometimes you finish them a little bit slower. Not a big deal. But yeah, I really am liking the interaction between the characters. I I love everyone. Like I I but definitely 3 Seagrass. I love her. And I just want to know what's going on. I want to know what's going on. Like in the beginning of the book, you have this new ambassador that comes to this planet, which is basically an imperialistic planet that like colonizes other worlds or other places. And this ambassador is of a place that hasn't been colonized but that there is a chance that they're gonna go to war and that they're gonna be colonized. So she's trying to, she's trying not to fall in love with this place that is, you know, a colonizer place, but she finds so much to like in it. And I found that kind of amazing. Like not gonna lie, I, I was shocked because of course I'm like nobody, you know, there's this whole thing about falling in love with your colonizer, you know, like the ideas of your colonizer and stuff like that. And I just think that this is really well looked at in this book and how conflicted she is. And I don't know. I like it. I like it. I'm not loving it because I'm confused half the time, but I really like it. And I'm going to continue reading. I've got this is my first full vacation day. I got up late. Okay, no, I didn't. I got up at the same time that I always get up, but I'm able to lay in bed and just enjoy. Look at that. Look at that. How can you not enjoy that? Look at the kitties. So today I have to clean the bathroom, and the good thing is I've got my handy dandy um, 
Bluetooth headphones that I can clean while I listen to this wonderful book. So, yeah, complete turnaround from yesterday where I was like, I'm not liking this at all. I think I went into it with um, really bad expectations. I went into it thinking, I'm not gonna like this. It's gonna be too fantasy, but it has not been fantasy at all, at all. So, that's my reading update and i will update you whenever i have anything to update you on there's construction going on there's nothing i can do about it but there's no other place to film in the house i mean there is but there's outside and it's just in front of my bookshelves and i kind of want to make this you know not in front of my bookshelves so you know we're gonna deal with it we're gonna deal with the uh, construction work and it's not like you're gonna not hear it from the other side of my house but anyway let's open up scribd and see how far I am into this book. I am 80% done with a memory called Empire. Now I have two things to say. Number one, I love the characters in this book. The characters in this book just carry this book for me. I also, I love the world. I love the world building and everything, but <laughs> this book is like a sleeping pill for me. I just, drift off whenever I'm listening to it. I tried reading it like physically and because I have it on on script or you can also do digital version of it. You, you get what I mean. I all and I just kept falling asleep. Honestly, I just don't care about the grand scheme of things. The the whole political conniving, all of that. I just don't see it. I don't it's not my it's not my shtick. It's not it's not my thing. When when I read sci-fi, what I really want out of my sci-fi is character driven sci-fi. And I think that's why I'm having much harder time with this than I was with Hyperion. Because Hyperion is highly character driven, while this is very political intrigue, which is good. It's really good. The political intrigue is really good. But I'm just not I'm not diving with it, you know? So, so far, this book is at a 3.75 stars for me. So far. Um, I, I don't know if it'll get better by the end. I mean, I have like an hour left of the audiobook. But, um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's not my perfect book. There we go. It's not my perfect book. I can understand why some people love it. And, yeah. I also want to point out that there are two characters that, by mistake, watching somebody else's video, I was spoiled for that they get together. In what world? <laughs> they have no chemistry as far as I'm concerned. They really have no chemistry, so I don't understand why they get together, but I like them together. That That's a good thing. Like, I like the idea that they're together. I just... I just don't see it. I don't see it, and, and well, I guess, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna listen to the rest of this and I will update you when I am done reading it. I finished A Memory Called Empire by Arcadi 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 Martin Martine? No, it's not Martine. I keep saying Martine like if it was French. Martine. Did I like it? Yes. I did like it. However, I must admit that I don't want to rate it yet. I don't want to put a rating on it. Although I'm sitting at a 3.75 4 star rating. And here's the thing. I still think that I missed out on a lot of things. Just simply because I'm not somebody that is a plot driven reader. But I am a character written. Um, character driven reader. There we go. And this um, book had a lot of plot in it. It had so much plot in it that I got lost. I got confused. I wasn't sure what was going on. And I think that that diminished my enjoyment of it. I think if you like some, if if you like vast plots and, and if you like political intrigue and you love well-rounded, well-crafted characters, then this book is for you. I loved the characters. I loved every single character. And as someone who is um, a Latin American woman living in Spain, I deeply, deeply identified with um, the main character, Mahit. I, I just, oh, oh, so many things that she said, so many things that she felt, I felt. 
However, I do think that in my eagerness to finish this book as quickly as possible, I think I might have not read correctly or got lost in some areas, you know? I think that some parts of it just went right over my head and that's why I'm not rating it right now because I feel that if I rate it, it's going to be like a... Somebody's in the motorcycle, hang on. So what was I saying? Yes. Do I recommend you read this book? I definitely recommend that you read and pick up this book. I, like, oh, oh yeah, I was saying how I felt very much like in tune with what Mahit said, especially at the end about being part of the empire and stuff like that. That really resonated with me, you know, I'm going through this whole citizenship thing and part of that is whether I want to renounce my nationality, my Venezuelan nationality, that's a whole mess that has nothing to do with this video, but it just, it, it was so important. <laughs> it was so, I, I really enjoyed the book. Overall, the characters carried this book for me and these characters were so well written. The one thing that annoyed me were the names. I cannot tell you the names of anyone. Like, <laughs> I can tell you the names of some of the key players and also I am I'm still sad about a death that happens. Don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil it. But I'm really sad about a death that happens. Oh, my friend Sarah is like sending me messages because she was like, keep me updated on what you liked and what you didn't like, so. So yeah, I think that overall, I'm going to settle at a 3.75, so I'm going to round it up to 4 stars for this book. I'm definitely picking up the second book in the, in the I don't know if it's going to be a trilogy or a series. I am definitely picking it up. I want to know what happens. I want to know where we go with these characters. I really like Three Seagrass as a character. I think she's really interesting. I, I loved 19 Adze. I, I'd say, is that how you say it? <laughs> That's it. That's my review of A Memory Called Empire and the second book in this little trial. Now, do I like Hyperion more or do I like A Memory Called Empire more? I think I like A Memory Called Empire more. I was more drawn to the characters in A Memory Called Empire. Although, I'm gonna be honest, they're kind of head to head because they're both really good books. And it's funny that I'm putting A Memory Called Empire on top of Hyperion that I gave five stars to. It's just that I think Hyperion would not be liked as much. And I didn't get like the experience of joy that I'm getting from, from having read A Memory Called Empire. So yeah, so coming up next we have... What is it? We Are Satellites by Sarah Pinkster. I'm gonna start it tomorrow. Today it's already... It's already 9 p.m. It's already 9 p.m. and I'm tired. I haven't been having a really good day. Like, I've been having a kind of, like, down day. I don't know. I slept very badly last night and I'm really homesick. <laughs> like, I'm super homesick for Venezuela. So, I think I'm just gonna chill out the rest of the day. I've also been watching a lot of booktube, so that's really exciting. And, well, I'll talk to you when I start the new book and we'll see how that goes so far it's it seems that my friends know my taste and that they really can like steer me well it steer me in good steed i love that that expression <laughs> when it comes to reading i should ask for recommendations more often now let's see if jesse I think Jessie's gonna nail it. Like, I've always thought that the book that I'm gonna like the best is this one, the um, uh, We Are Satellites, because I think it's more character-driven than plot-driven. So I think that this one is the one that I'm gonna like the best. But I'll be honest, so far, everybody, Sarah, because Sarah did want to recommend A Memory Called Empire, Sarah, Ramsey, and Angela, you, have, you guys have nailed it. You have done so well recommending books that I will like. So let's see if Jessie is right with her pick. Hi, so I've been sitting here talking to Sarah and talking about like how this book made me feel as an immigrant and you know just a lot of stuff about myself that I don't necessarily want to like put out there and share with the world about my nationality and my national identity and you know how I look Spanish and I sound Spanish and how like people sometimes 
not in a mean-spirited way but make fun of the way I speak Spanish because I speak in a different dialect basically is it, it's a dialect or I use different words because I'm not from Spain but um, I'm just gonna give a memory called Empire five out of five stars <laughs> I was gonna give it a 3.75 and just I kept talking about it and I kept thinking about it and, and I, I just See this is why you you should wait like I didn't post on Goodreads my rating because I knew This is a book you have to sit on this is not a book that is going to just like Slap you over the face with oh my god. It's so good. You know you you I think you, I was I was saying how I went into it wanting to read it fast and wanted to, you know, this is not that book that you're gonna read fast. You should take your time with it and you should really analyze it. And if you're somebody that it has migrated and specific, specifically somebody who has gone from, you know, a third world country to a country that was previously their colonizer or, you, it, which is my, my case, or a country that seeks to colonize or, a, a, or an imperialistic nation and you want to fit in but at the same time you want to keep your identity like this is such a good book man <laughs> I just keep the you know I was I was kind of so so on it but it was because I was focusing on the wrong thing I kept thinking that I had to focus on the political intrigue and that I had to solve the mystery and I had to solve everything but the reality is that I didn't have to do that what I had to focus on was on the characters and their plights and 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 their interactions and oh my god I'm sorry my Roomba just went on and my husband turned it off and it was so scary <laughs> so even my cat got scared so anyway um yeah I'm just gonna give it the five out of five stars definitely I definitely like it more than Hyperion the thing with Hyperion is um, Hyperion is a fast-paced book. You can read it really, really fast, and that's really good. And it's still a 5 out of 5 stars. So, um, yeah. I just wanted to add this in there, uh, because I've been having this conversation with Sarah. And it just, like, brought to the front, like, so much. I, like I was saying, I've been feeling homesick today, and I think that I really needed to get that out there, you know? And I really need to, to talk about it. So, yeah. Memory Called Empire, 5 out of 5 stars, and so far, my favorite book that I've read from these, but still, Hyperion is also 5 out of 5 stars, so just, it's been an amazing reading week, <laughs> and it's not even been a week, it's been two days of reading, yeah, it's been two days, because I finished Hyperion one day, I started A Memory Called Empire, and I finished it today, so it's been, it's been an incredible two days of reading, I really hope... I really hope We Are Satellites doesn't let me down, you know? Sometimes I think that a book can really let you down if you like... Like, you know, if you read The Picture of Dorian Gray and then you read like a YA contemporary, maybe co the comparison isn't going to help. So I wonder if that's going to happen to this book, like to, to We Are Satellites. Because after reading A Memory Called Empire and reading Hyperion before that, I wonder if this is gonna stand on its own and I really hope it does because it's the book that I was the most excited for. The other two I was really scared about and it turns out that I really like them. I think I really need to give long books a better like place. Like I need to, I, I really need to appreciate longer books more. I'm always scared of them and the reason is, is I'm impatient and I want to finish them really fast. So yep, that's it. I'm gonna stop now. I'm gonna, I, I, I've, been, I've been rambling, but yeah, five out of five stars to a memory called Empire. And remember, like, I talked about this in, in one of my um, videos about like how it, at first impression you sometimes want to give a book a rating, and then it turns out that you completely change your mind. Like the first time I read Horrid, I gave it a two star, and now it's like a five star book, and I think about that book constantly. So. It's okay to change your mind on ratings. I think it, I think it's normal, isn't it? <laughs> At least it is for me. I just changed my mind in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> so yeah, um, five out of five stars. Good morning. First of all, I want to apologize because I feel this vlog has been very boring, but the reality of my life is that it is actually very boring. I don't go out much. Um, you know, we're still in a critical state of pandemic here in Spain and I am not fully vaccinated. I will be this week, 
but um, I don't want to expose myself to the virus and also when I go out I usually go out with my husband and I don't want to bring my camera along because you know then I'll be more focused on the camera or something um, and yeah so you get a lot of me in my bedroom just like now I'm in bed and enjoying it very much but today is the day that I start reading um, We Are Satellites by Sarah Pinkster. Um, I, I'm not, I, I am pretty sure, I, I think I've said the synopsis to this a bunch of times. It's just a book about a uh, family and one of the people, one of the children in the family wants an implant that they give, oh my god, I look like shit, but <laughs> that, they, that, they, that they can get to do things in a better way or to multitask or to be ahead of the curve and I think yeah I think there's some conflict there that's what I think the book is about I obviously don't have any of these books physically so I can't read you a description but I will be updating you from my bedroom or maybe I'll take you outside because I cleaned yesterday to my my cat just really wants to be on camera yeah now she's biting there we go there look at the little paws look at the little bean for now I'm just gonna put on my bluetooth headset put some makeup on listen to um the beginning of we are satellites and maybe film a video hey so I've been reading for a while I've been reading for a long while but my cat the one that never wants to sit with me was like laying on me and I didn't want to move so I haven't updated you and I am now 30% into uh, We Are Satellites by Sarah Pinkster and so far I am loving this book it's a soft sci-fi so like the sci-fi that you hear about it's it kind of doesn't change very much from the real world and I feel like this is the sort of sci-fi that like is plausible this is the the sci-fi that really gets me where it's like a small group of character driven soft sci-fi sort of feel you know so i think i'm gonna keep reading this i just i'm loving it so far this one it has been the first book where i'm like hooked from the beginning like this book just hooked me from the beginning and i'm really enjoying it I don't know if I'm going to finish it today because one thing that I noticed is that I read books at 3x speed. This one is at 3x. But sometimes books require you to read them a little bit slower. And I think that because I'm scared of not having content for my channel, I read them so fast. And that happened with to me with A Memory Called Empire. I should have read that book at 2x speed instead of 3x because it just... I don't know it felt wrong <laughs> like I felt like I was missing out on a lot of stuff because I was reading it so fast also I'm really sad about the cover of this book I'm gonna bite the bullet and get the older cover it's gonna be way more expensive but I like the older cover better which is the one that you're seeing but this is the new cover new so um yeah I'm loving this book so far I love the characters I love how fleshed out they are I love how Sophie, I think her name is Sophie, <laughs> it's just that there's a Julia Sophie I think and it's really confusing but I love how she knows of her, her disability and she knows how they're trying to take care of her and she doesn't enjoy it because she, she knows that she's capable of a lot more than they allow her to do because of her disability. So I just think this book, this book is I'm gonna predict it now. I think it's gonna be a five out of five stars. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go to the kitchen and cook. Yeah. Now, see, you can see another part of my apartment. And yes, I am strategically holding this so you can't see that I haven't washed my plates. Look, the dishwasher is full. Life happens. You know, I never thought about it, but filming in front of my kitchen kind of slaps. It looks really good. Also, can we see that I did clean? I clean I spent hours cleaning this house because since I work so much I don't have a lot of time to clean and since I'm on vacation I cleaned and I listened to way more of We Are Satellites by Sarah Pinkster and I just have nothing else to say I'm loving it 
Um, I'm, I'm kind of interesting because it's I'm kind of interesting. I am an interesting person, but I'm kind of interested because it's taking a very cool kind of weird turn. Oh, and that's my husband's lunch. And look at the salad that I made. Doesn't that look delicious? But we're not here for the salad. We're here for the update. Actually, I did want to show you the salad, and I did want to show you that my house can look presentable. So it's taken an interesting turn. I like the dynamic between the brother and the sister. Um, I like the sister's name is Sophie, by the way. I like her growth throughout the book. I like how divided the family is, and how. I think the book explores that feeling of when you grow up and you try to capture being young again and being home with mom and, and, and mom in this case, <laughs> being home with your parents and, and yet that feeling of home, of unity never comes together again. You, you are forever changed because now you're an adult and, and you're no longer little kids that you can just solve things by taking to a baseball mat and things like that, you know? I, I think that that's really cool. And I like how um, one of the main characters, um, the, the girl, Sophie, I like how she ha is going through her rebellious teenage phase. I, I won't spoil anything for the brother, but um, he's he's got his own issues going on. It's so fucking good. And so is my salad, which we're gonna eat with chicken tenders well rodrigo's gonna eat these are beans from the other day are really good and we have some rice and i'm gonna eat these green cuisine chicken thingies which you know are vegan because i only eat vegan food <laughs> and that's the update and my kitchen's looking smexy just look at it just take it all in it's amazing. Yay. Hey. Um, so I've been reading this book on and off all day. It's so good. It's so good. I love the descriptions they're having right now of like arguing with your family. If you've ever argued with your spouse, your significant other, with your friends, with your sister, with your brother, but you have to live with them still and you're so scared that anything you'll do will just ruin this relationship forever. And it, oh, this book does it so well. It's so, so good. I'm, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. So I'm, I'm so sure I'm going to give this five stars. I'm 80% in. I'm probably going to... No, I'm more than 80% in. Hang on. I'm 90% into the book. I'm so sure that I'm going to finish this tonight. Because I just... I have to know what happens. I have to know what happens. And I don't know. This this book is amazing. I, I'm, I'm predicting the five stars now. That means that I would have read five... Not five. Three <laughs> five stars books recommended by my friends who clearly know my taste oh my gosh i'm so excited okay i'm gonna I'm gonna go i'm gonna finish this i look a little rough because i've been cleaning and we went out on a walk and it was nice but yeah we're gonna get back to the audiobook i finished it i finished well we are satellites by sarah pinkster and i absolutely loved it i adored everything about this book like there's nothing that i would change about this book and as i was predicting this is my number one book that i've read um the last days i just i loved it it was so real heartwarming it was so realistic and yet dark and 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 hopeful and so many so many things i absolutely love this book we're gonna talk about the hair it's growing out it's doing all kinds of things i did dye it uh the, like like i dyed my grays this like reddish color it <laughs> we're going through it we're going through it but you know what you're here for the wrap-up of my sci-fi recommendations by my friends and I have to say this was a pretty fun amazing experience what I found was that my friends know me better than I do because I read three five-star books and that's just incredible to me and I know that I was reading in um, audiobook format that's why you see them here um, and not physically I do plan on getting all of these physically in fact one of them might be on its way already but I'm kind of on a book buying man because you know I'm not working and stuff I'm gonna 
talk about these books in order of which I like them, but keep in mind they're all five stars. So really, it's just like my enjoyment. But in general, I think these books are incredible because they're all five stars. So first, we're gonna talk about Hyperion. Hyperion was amazing. I loved it. I read it so fast. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting to finish it as fast as I did because it's a it's a hefty, it's like a 500 page classic sci-fi story and yet I flew through it. It was great, it was amazing and I said I wasn't gonna recommend it a lot on my channel but I might, I might change my mind on that and recommend it a lot because I have some videos coming up that it fits into. The next one we have, so Hyperion is like the least liked and then we get to the middle ground which is A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin. I think that's the first time I've said that name right this whole video. But anyway, I really loved the world building here. I loved the characters. I loved their interactions. And once I got over the fact that I'm just not a political plot person and just focused on the characters, everything went smoothly. I want to mention that this book was not only recommended to me by Angela from a Literary Science Alliance, but it was also recommended to me by Sarah from voyages through worlds, through times, through words. I don't remember, Sarah, I will never remember your channel name and I am so sorry about that. <laughs> and then the last book and my most enjoyed book of them all is We Are Satellites by Sarah Pinkster. Now this book was also recommended to me by two people and I kept mentioning Jessie from A Bookish Mom because she was like the first one to recommend it to me. But my good friend Rachel from The Shades of Orange also recommended this book to me and what this shows me is that you all know my taste. You know what I like, you know what I won't like. I'm glad nobody was like, hey Monica, <laughs> read, I don't know, um, what's it called? The Expanse. I'm gonna try to read The Expanse, but that's for another video. But yeah, you all definitely know what to recommend and I guess that I should pay attention to my beautiful friends more often because this was such a great reading vlog. Although right now I'm kind of like <laughs> debating what to pick up next because how do you follow up three five star books at the beginning of the month? That's just incredible. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and remember all of my socials are down below and like, subscribe, leave a comment and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.